Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to the next episode in my series Behind the Raw, where I take you with me behind the scenes and talk you through my edit, my workflow and my thoughts from an image from a recent shoot. Now, this week, it's the turn of an exposure that I did that I kind of was felt as if I was forced into doing it. So I was still at my epic location after my incredible sunset. And now it was the following morning for sunrise and we had high hopes, but also we said, okay, 50-50 chance that we'd have a bit of light. We didn't have any light. What we did have though was a lot of wind and a lot of clouds. So I decided to pop on my uh, big stop, 10, 10 stop exposure and go for a 10 minute exposure. The idea behind that was to be able to have the clouds as they moved above the overall scene and this scene was absolutely stunning. If you haven't seen that episode, actually, I'll link to it up here, but it was incredibly beautiful. I had this picturesque arch below me and then it's some beautiful headland and cliffs all surrounding the entire area. The water there was beautiful like it was the night before, a beautiful shade of blue but now with the grey skies and the moving clouds enabled me to be able to capture a bit of difference and movement in the image. So I'm going to take you here onto my computer onto Lightroom Classic. I'll talk you through my entire editing of this image. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now and here is the image. And it was an image that I absolutely loved because as you can see down below me here, you have this beautiful sea arch and this cliff is full of texture. It comes all the way along here. You've got a small visibility of a house up in this end. And then this area here is where I was shooting for sunset. So you've got all these beautiful stacks that are within here. And I was on an island off the coast of Ireland. So here is the mainland of Ireland as well. So you can just make out, if I zoom into it here, um, you can just make out the ocean as it comes in around the back of there also. But the main thing what I wanted to do here is I was here for sunrise. And as you can see, there's a small tiny bit of color here in the sky. The, sky, the sun was rising onto the left hand side of the frame. But with the 601 second exposure, I was at F8, ISO was 100, I was at 16 mil. And I was lucky in a way that I was able to get this right in the camera because I was kind of winging it. I said, okay, I think I'm going to get 10 minutes and I managed to get um, 10 minutes. But what it did give me is it gave me a complete smoothing of the sky, but also streaking of the clouds. And that's the thing, if you want to do some ultra long exposures, wait until the wind is blowing either directly towards you or directly away from you. And then you get these beautiful streaks that are within the sky. Now, also, from a composition point of view here, I shot this and I was thinking, okay, did I want or do I want to have this foreground here in front of me? Yes, I do, because I think it adds context to the image. It also gives you an anchor and a grounding. Um, but I've noticed something within there and I'll show it to you in a moment when we get to editing this image. So what I'm going to do on this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to follow my usual process that I normally would do. There's nothing much different to do for here, except for one thing which I know I suffer from anyway on my own camera sensor, but I'll get to that as well in a moment. So standard standard approach i'll take my horizon first and foremost and i can see that it's slightly off on this side over here so i'm just going to straighten that up now i have to be conscious as well that it's going to move off on the other side it's the problem with 16 mil is that you will have a bit of fall off and curvature um, but at the same point i want to concentrate on this side because that's more visible than when i see it dropping off over here so that is perfectly fine now, if I come into my exposure here, and again, as I normally will do, I'm going to hit auto just to give you an idea of what auto will do with the image. And it's actually done a pretty good job here because it hasn't really affected the sky. If I give you a look here at the before and after, not much done to the sky, but the majority has been done is done here on the foreground, which is what I wanted it to be to be able to brighten that up. But I still have some dark areas here which are highlighted in blue, as you can see. But um, it's brought the highlights down. If I bring the highlights down and bring them back up here, you'll see that this loses the texture in the sky. So I probably agree with that, but what it's also done, the reason with that is it's brought up the exposure. And probably again, you know, I guessed it, like I said, I winged this, I mean, probably half 
0.5 of an increase here I think is fine but yeah I'm going to know let the histogram tell me what I can and can't do so this is telling me that this area here is slightly clipping so I'm going to bring that slightly down that disappears up here but it also disappears over here as well also and the shadows again as usual look I can whack that all the way up here you do get the detail from it you know for me on this occasion actually I don't think it looks uh, HDR because again I was winging this I got it just about right but a bit of tan on the dark side so I think I'll leave that actually up here I'm going to affect it at the moment I'll come back to it as we finish up on the image on the whites point of view you can see we have a few different bats of white here so I'm going to just see whatever I can bring that up ever so slightly so I'm now dealing with the sky that's here but what I might perhaps do is just bring up my whites bigger so I make my whites brighter in the main foreground and I can adjust this then when I put a linear gradient onto that. And then the blacks, you know, there's a tiny bit of crunching in the blacks here. That's fine. That is in the darkness effectively uh, overall when you look at the image. Now, another thing as well to look at this is what it did to the water. As you can see, it completely smoothed out that water. So that's what happens when you get your 10 minute exposure. Any movement whatsoever is gone so from that point of view i think i like that that's perfectly fine as well and then if i look at my white balance so i generally look and click take a piece of the sky so if i click on a gray cloud here watch what it does to the image it completely warms up the image and i think that is actually right to happen because it was at sunrise so the sunlight was just coming in over here so i do like the subtleness that you see on this here and if we look and i zoom into these areas you can see that light just bouncing off of the uh, side of the arch no, so that's the first thing that's done here. Now, the next thing I look at here and saying, okay, do I introduce dehaze? And if I introduce dehaze, I'll just make this fit for a moment. If I introduce dehaze into this image, it's going to affect the sky more so than anything else. And it's going to bring out those streaks that we see here. I could really crunch that dehaze here and you see all the potential that's there in that sky, but I don't want to do a true dehaze. Um, I want to do that through a linear mask. So I'm going to go fine from here. Vibrance automatic is given at a plus 14. I think, yeah, probably doesn't even need that. Now I'm gonna go to a plus eight, and I just want to just affect my black, just bring those up so they're not crunching. It just makes the image, just lifts the image that little bit more. Now, then when I come into my linear gradient, so I can do one or two things here. You can use your new AI tools. You can say, okay, select the sky. So let's just see if I hit sky, let's see what it selects. It does a relatively good job, but it doesn't think that this is the sky over here. So it's not going to affect that. So I'm not going to utilize that one. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go into a linear gradient, holding down the shift key. I'm going to drag this and I want to again, again make it large enough so that it doesn't become very much so visible uh, when I drag this down here on the actual overall image. And then I want to bring that right onto the horizon. And then all I'm going to do on that is I'm going to take my highlights down. So it's only going to affect my highlights. And you can see now my red bar is disappearing. And now the streaks are coming into that overall sky. Now, when I look at this, if I move this up and down, you can see that because I've made that linear gradient that little bit bigger, you you don't see the overall line uh, like a hard grad uh, effectively so bringing this to here I think is perfectly fine okay now if I want to look at this here let's come out of that and look at my before as you can see quite dark um, but now after all of the detail is there now the final thing then that I want to look at and it is something that I've got an issue with with my sensor because I do quite a lot of long exposures and this was an ultra long exposure and you might be able to see them already from here so if I just zoom in you see these sensor hotspots that are there so these sensor hotspots are happening because within the sensor it's been on for so long it gets a bit of heat within that and then you get this which is a loss of data in that this one is particularly bad because it was um, a 10 minute exposure so there's a couple of ways to be able to remove that and i'm going to try one right now if we go into our detail panel and we hit on denoise and denoise will consider this generally as noise so we'll have a look and see does it do it and if, if it takes any if not all of them so that's loading in here as you can see it's taking all the smaller ones but it's not taking the bigger ones and that's fine because if i do that now and i take that it'll take away the smaller versions and only leaves me the bigger ones then to be able to remove so i click on this allow that to be able to work its magic and probably take a room maybe i don't know 30 or 40 seconds and then I'm going to go in with my heel brush and I'm going to take out the ones then that that hasn't 
um, removed from the image. And there's also another piece as well that I definitely need to take out within this image because I was quite surprised to be able to see it there. But now that's done here. And as you can see now, all it's left is the bigger ones for me to find. So if I come in here and I go into my heel brush and I just take, make this very, very, very small. You don't need to make it big. And it's just going to take that out. Oh, that's masking, apologies. I used the wrong button. So if I go in here and I use my heel and now I'd make it very small, just the size of what I want it to be. It's going to remove each of these. Take me a couple of seconds to do this. I'll go through them anyway. Um, rather than you waiting, I'll fast forward to when it's done and I'll talk to you in a moment. Okay, so now that's done. You can see here by these links that these are the hotspots that I had to remove and it's cleaned the image up now overall nicely. If I go back into fit here for a moment, you can see the amount that I had to do. And if I take that back off, you know, the image is pretty much done except for one thing. And I want to zoom in to over here. And I was quite surprised to be able to see this, which was a half finished bottle of pop of some sort. So, you know, number one, I didn't even see that when I was there, but number two, the fact that it was there is quite, you know, disappointing because considering the remoteness of where we were. But anyway, nonetheless, let's grab this here, quite straightforward. And now we're going to remove that. And then also I'm just going to take this edge out and this edge out so that there's nothing remaining of that. Now we come back out here. And if I hadn't told you that there was a bottle there, oops, you wouldn't know that there was a bottle there. So I think overall within that image, I really like it. I'm not cropping it either because I want to have this foreground that's there, but I love this arch. I love the way the water is moving around it, but this is what I was mainly looking at, which is the streaks in the sky. So yeah, thank you very much as always for joining this episode. Hope you enjoyed the look into this uh, ultra, ultra long uh, exposure. I really enjoyed this trip entirely. This is the last now from my trip with Bernard and it was a phenomenal trip. I got some stunning images and I hope you enjoy coming along as well over the last number of weeks on this journey. Join me next week when I'm uh, at an area which is in my own home, home county which is of Cork and I'm at the beacon of West Cork in Baltimore. So yeah, that'll be this episode here. Hope you can join me next Sunday. As always, thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, schnongafol.